Hey guys, it's Mr. Salona here. This is the setup for the Impulse Momentum Lab. So the equipment that you're going to need are the gray track, you're going to need a cart, you're going to need a motion detector and a force sensor that's clamped down to the table. You need the LabQuest interface that plugs the sensors into the computer and you need your laptop. It's also important that the cart has a string and a rubber band and that you have some extra masses as well. So this is the motion detector here. It sends a sound pulse out from it toward the cart and the sound pulse bounces off the cart and comes back and that tells you the velocity of the cart. Over on the other side of the track you have this force sensor which has a little hook on it. We're going to attach either the string or the rubber band to the hook like this and it's going to measure how much tension is in this string as the cart starts to pull this way as the cart rolls across the table. On the LabQuest interface you want to plug the force sensor into channel 1 and you want to plug the motion detector into the digital one over here. So that's your setup. When you do the experiment what you want to do is you want to take the cart and push it away from the force sensor and push it in the direction of the motion detector. And what's going to happen is as the cart starts to roll, eventually the string's going to get tight, the cart's going to stop, and it's actually going to start to roll back in the opposite direction. And the computer is going to track the velocity of the cart and also how much force was being exerted on the cart by the strings. So that's the basic setup you'll do four trials. In two of the trials you will have the cart empty like this. In two of the trials you will add 500 grams of mass to the cart like this. So that'll be a total of four. Two of them will require you to use only the string to attach the car to the force sensor and two of them you will use the string and a rubber band that's stretchy. All right, guys, so I want to show you the setup for the Impulse Momentum Lab on the computer. So once you have all of the sensors connected correctly and the USB plugged in, you'll see this collect, and you'll see that there are three graphs on the screen. We only need two of the three. So what we're going to do first is change it. So we go here to the view. We want to make it two graphs, and we want to change this graph to a velocity versus time graph. We don't need to track the position, so we'll turn that off. And now you can see we have two graphs here. So one of them is recording the force as a function of time, so it's going to track the tension in the string. The other one is tracking the cart's velocity as it rolls across the track. So what we do is we give the cart a push after we hit the collect button. So we're going to press collect, we're going to push the car, it's going to pull the string, and it's going to come back like so. After we get the data, You'll notice there's a bump in the graph. That's where the string got tight. I want to hit this zoom button so I can see that very clearly. I also want to click on it down here so I can see the velocity versus time graph. What I want to do is I want to know a couple of things. I want to know what was the velocity of the cart just before the string pulled on it and just after. So that's here. So if I click on the graph right about there, that's going to tell me the initial velocity. So negative 2.8, uh, 0.283. And after it pulled backwards in the opposite direction, what was its velocity? It's about 0.201 meters per second. So I would record those as the initial and the final velocity. I'm also going to highlight the peak of the force graph. So I'm going to go from here and highlight across to the end of the peak, which is about here. And I want to note how long that took. So notice it goes from 1.8 seconds to 2.2 seconds. So the duration of that is 0.4 seconds. The last thing that I need is the impulse. So I click on graph tools and I click on view integral and it's going to shade in that peak for me. 
the area is the impulse. So I will record this value, 0.22, uh, 0.299 newton seconds, as my impulse, and that'll go into my data table. Once I have those four pieces of information, I should be able to calculate everything else I need from that, and I'll be able to tell what the impulse was, what the change in momentum was, and compare those values, and we'll be able to see the differences between using the string and using the rubber band.